Throughout history, lies have been told through the framework of government and through the framework of the church. And when I say church, I'm not talking about the church that is sanctified and driven by God. I'm talking about the church that is corrupt and that follows its own agenda. Without a doubt, those types of churches have been around since the very beginning, and they're also very prevalent right now. Why is it like that? Well, look at the Catholic Church, for instance. It's always been about power, and the best example is when Jesus came. Those in position of power immediately saw him as a threat, and instead of embracing him, they rebuked him and punished him, and then spread as many lies and deceit as they could. So, the agenda is no different when it comes to Adam and Eve, especially with Adam and the basis for mankind. And for those in a corrupt church that has gone through, excuse me, that has gone on for centuries, they want things to be said and done and look a certain way. So check out Pastor Price and you'll see what I mean. Adam and Eve had to be mid-brown. They could not have been white. Now watch this. Someone, one of our members, gave me some information that they had retrieved from the internet. And uh, I looked at it. Uh, he gave me the information. They gave me the information after, if you remember when we talked about, we talked about uh, Adam and Adam. You remember? Anybody remember that? And I gave you the definition from, from James Strong's concordance of what Adam meant. Uh, flushed in the face, ruddy or red. Well, most white theologians will tell you that what that means is that a person is pale white. And then when they blush, the blood rushes to their surface of their skin and they turn rosy. Well, that don't stay that way. That's only when you blush and you don't be blushing all the time. He, it talks about ruddy. That meant that was a color, a reddish copper brown. And, but you see, you can interpret things and who can say that it's not right? And so for 400 years, the church has been interpreting this thing as that Adam was white and rosy face when he flushed or blushed, but he was white. But the genetics don't line up with that. Amen. That bird won't fly. No. Now, this person gave me this information that he had retrieved off the Internet. Well, I'm, you know, I'm the person I want to see for myself. And so it was a little bit of information that was not there. And I felt like I couldn't use it because I didn't have a little tack on part. So anyway, last night I went to the Internet and I found the website and I found this information. And I want to just briefly give you because this is the kind of material that's been promulgated down through time. And that's why most white people today, just like most black people today, the white people, the black people, and I'm primarily talking about them, and I've told you this before because in America, that's the real issue. The other people, their, their problems, there too. But the big problem in America is the black and white thing. Amen. Huh? Amen. And so they've been promulgating this thing about Adam and Eve being white. Now listen to this. Uh, and I'm quoting. Scriptures for America Worldwide is an outreach ministry of the Laporte Church of Christ directed by Pastor Peter J. Peters, dedicated to proclaiming the true gospel of Jesus the Christ and reveal to Americans and all Western nations their true biblical identity. End of quote. Did you, get, did you catch that? Western nation, so the Eastern nation don't exist, apparently. <laughs> oh, you didn't get that? Oh, no, you didn't. Let me, let me read that again. See, that's how stuff has come down to us and been slanted. Nobody's challenged it. Nobody's thought about what was being said. Listen to this. Scripture, I quote, Scriptures for America Worldwide is an outreach ministry of the Laporte Church of Christ directed by Pastor Peter J. Peters, dedicated to proclaiming the true gospel of Jesus the Christ and revealed to Americans and all Western nations their true biblical identity. 
So they're telling us there ain't nobody count but the Western folk. So that means all the people in the East, they don't exist. That's the implication. Going on, I want to quote, uh, this is the 10-page uh, dissertation that was in on the Internet. And I'm only going to use pages one and two. But I, uh, I'm going to tell you, let's see. If you want to look it up for yourself, it would be you can you, uh, go to your, go to a, do your search and find Scriptures for America Worldwide. That's how I found it. Scriptures for America Worldwide. Okay? Now, uh, and I'm quoting. Uh, frequently asked questions regarding Israel identity. Point three at www.identity.org. Okay? FAQ dash Israel. Frequently asked questions. Israel identity dot point three at www.identity.org. What? Listen to this now. Quoting. Frequently asked questions and answers on Israel identity. Part three of three. Last updated two twenty ninety five. Continued from FAQ dash Israel identity part two. Under numeral eleven. You ready for this? What about quote? What about Adam and Eve? Were they of the white race, or are they the mother and father of all the races? You didn't even get that. Wasn't by about three of you got you. You did not even. You didn't even get that. You didn't even get the implication. I'm going to read it again. You're going to get this. <laughs> Quote, what about Adam and Eve? Were they of the white race or are they the mother and father of all the races? Did you get that? Yeah. See, the implication here is that there are two separate races. The white race, and then all the rest of your mongrels. <laughs> That's what the implication is. Did you get that? Listen. What about Adam and Eve? Were they of the white race? Or, or, say or. 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 Are they the mother and father of all the races? So see, their implication is that they're not. They're only the mother and father of the white race. And not the mother and father of all the rest of the races. And you still didn't get it, but that's all right. All right, now, under number, under numeral one on page one of ten, it says Adam was white. Skipping down about the middle of that page, and I quote again. Adam was fair and white, which caused the hemoglobin blood to show in his face, making him look ruddy or to give him a flush look. End of quote. Moving down to the very bottom of that page and a part of the second page, it says that Adam and Eve were of the white race with this fair, ruddy or rosy complexion is verified in the Bible by the description of their descendants. But, but they don't mean, they don't mean the colored descendants, the black, brown, red, and yellow. They're talking about it's all white. Under Roman, uh, under um, numeral two on page two of 10, I quote, were they of the white race or are they the mother and father of all the races? Where does the idea come from that believes Adam and Eve were the only first two people on God's created earth. Both creationists and evolutionists agree with this false assumption. Both positions are wrong. 
but their adherents stubbornly cling to this concept as the only possible explanation when the truth lies elsewhere. The hypocrisy of the creationist rejection of evolution should be self-evident when they claim that all men have sprung from a single pair, Adam and Eve, end of quote. Hey, the evolutionists and the creationists didn't say we all sprang from Adam and Eve. The Bible does. But they're claiming, they're claiming that the Bible doesn't. But watch this. Watch this. Okay, go back to Genesis now. Yeah, I got it. Go back to Genesis now. Now, if Adam and Eve were not, say were not, not. the first man and woman that God created, there should be some Bible evidence of it. Now, now follow along. In chapter 1, verse 26, it said, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them, that is man, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now, let's get, let, 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 let's get this straight. Watch this now. Then God said, now this is after all the creation of the fish and the, and the uh, animals, the birds, the fowl, the trees, vegetate, everything. Then it says, then God said, let us make man. Now, notice it doesn't say, let us make white man, black man, brown man, red man, yellow man. It didn't say, didn't say, let us make Adam. But he said, let us make man. Okay? Now follow this. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image, in his image, in the image of God. He created him. Him refers back to man. Male and female, he created them. Because, see, females are still man. I'm not talking about lesbians now. I just want to be sure you understand. I'm not not talking about lesbians. I'm not talking about homosexuals. Okay, that's that's another book, another chapter, another day, another time. But see, here's what I mean. It says, verse 27, so God created man in his own image. He in in his, own, in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female. See, male and female is him. Him is man. What man? Mankind. And females are a part of mankind, just like males are a part of mankind. Aren't they? Amen. Aren't you? Okay, verse 28. Then God blessed them. Them what? them male, female, man. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Verse 29. Then God said, I have given you. Obviously now, you refers back to them, refers back to him, refers back to mankind. Are you still following me? All right, now, verse 15 of chapter 2. Then the Lord God took the man, say man, and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, say man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat from it, for in the day that you eat it, eat of it, you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him, that is man, 
a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam. Now the word Adam also means mankind. See, you are considered a female, but you are Adam. You are considered a male, but you are Adam. Adam is different from lion, tiger, dog, cat, fish, and bird. Mankind is Adam or Adam. We've always usually just put that with just the man himself, the male man, not the one that delivers the mail, but the male man. <laughs> the M-A-L-E, not the M-A-I-L man. Okay. All right. Watch this now. All right. Uh, 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 verse 19. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam or to the man to see what he would call them and whatever Adam, the man, called each living creature, that was his name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Now, to show you that Adam is the same man in verse 26 of chapter 1, go right back to verse 18. And it says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Verse 20. So Adam gave names to all the cattle, of, to the birds of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Same words, helper. And it said man and it said Adam. So Adam is the man and the man is Adam. Come on. Can you see that? All right. Verse 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, the man, and he slept and he took one of his, that is Adam, the man's rib, closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man or Adam, he made into a woman and he brought her to the man, Adam. And there it is right there, verse 23. And Adam said, look at it. Look at the last part of verse 21 or verse 22. I'm sorry. Look at verse 22. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man or from man, he made into a woman and he brought her to the man. Verse 23 says, and Adam said. So Adam and the man are the same. And we know that the woman was named Eve. So we have followed God from the very inception of him creating man. And the only one he created was Adam and Eve. So Adam and Eve have to be the mother of all the races. So Adam and Eve could not have been white. They had to be mid-brown. Now, the racists will jump in my chest right now. Knock me down on the ground. And say to me, yes, Brother Price, that may be true, but you must remember that God cursed Ham and his curse was blackness. That's what they've been teaching for 400 years in this country, in a church. That the black color is a result of the curse on Ham. And so Adam and Eve are still white because Ham's color didn't come from genetics. It came from the curse. Well, number one, you can't find a scripture in the Bible. I'll eat the scripture on nationwide television publicly without salt. If you show me a scripture where it says God cursed Ham black, show me a scripture that says God cursed Ham black. I'll eat the scripture, the page that it's on. Without salt publicly. It's not in the book. God never cursed Ham. Watch this. Noah did, but Noah is not God. And don't tell me that God is going to take a man who probably was still suffering from a hangover because he was drunk and that that's going to 
stick throughout all eternity because he said it, the word of a man that just got off a drunk? Now, now, beside that, I have another question for the races. If God cursed Ham and the curse was black so that all of his children had to come out black, then I want to know what shade of black. <laughs> Watch this now. Watch this now. And I don't think these gentlemen will mind. Can you put your Bibles down? Now you're going to be on nationwide television. Do you have a problem with this? Okay, come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. Turn around and face. Get, to, get, get over there where you can get them on camera. You, you stand over here. You stand. Come this way. Come this way. Come this way. Now, get the camera right in his face. I want it right as close as you can get him up. Now, this man is considered by this society as a black man. Put the camera on this man. This man is considered by our society as a black man. Now, you got to be deaf, dumb, blind, and dishonest not to see that there be a difference between them two. Now, I'm considered as a black man and put me right in the middle, and we got three different colors of black. <laughs> now, what I want to know, what I want to know is how or which color was ham cursed. This color black, this color black, or this color black? Thank you. Now, watch this. Watch this. Get over here again. If this color black is the color that Ham was cursed, then that means that every cursed black person has to be his color. All right. All right. Come on. If Ham was cursed this color black, then every one of his children and all of his children's children would have to be this color black. If Ham was cursed my color black, then all of his descendants would have to be my color. And if the color was a curse, then I don't care if he married a snow white without the seven dwarfs, his children are still going to have to come out black because black is a curse. Okay. All right. Oh, you didn't get that? See, the color could never change because genetics is not what it's about. It's about to curse. So if you curse black, then every single child has got to be the same color as the person that was cursed in the first place or else the curse had changed. Well, we know that that ain't true. If you take a person, the color of that man right there, and he marries a white person, a snow white from Scandinavia, their kids are not, their kids will come out all kind of colors. And if those kids marry other kids of their color, they'll be a lighter color than that. So if the curse was black, then the black can't ever go away because it's a curse. Beside all of that, my Bible tells me in Galatians chapter 3 and verses 14, I think in 15 or 13 and 14, it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. Okay, so, hey, hey, if I'm, if I'm redeemed from the curse, and listen, the book that talks about Noah is in the ninth chapter of Genesis. And the book of Genesis is in what's called the law. The first five books known as the Pentateuch is called the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So if I'm redeemed from the curse through Christ, then the black ought to leave and I ought to be white. You can't be that dumb. You can't be that stupid. The white race can't be that stupid. Neither can the black race. You've been believing that lie. Both white people and black people have been believing that lie. It is a lie. Came right out of hell. And that's where it's got to go. Back to hell. Oh, 
yeah. Oh, I know you hate to admit it. Oh, I know you hate to have to give in to it. But it's true, and science backs it up. Adam and Eve were not white. We've been told that lie for too long. We are not, as black people, an afterthought of God. So in conclusion, what did you take away from this? Well, hopefully you took away from the fact that we've been fed a bunch of lies for many, many years. And that many of us bought into the lies hook, line, and sinker. But what's sad is many will still believe a lie or lies, regardless of the fact thrown right in our faces. Many will still believe about the curse of Ham, even though it was put in check by Pastor Price as a lie. And a lie through the church, I may ask or specify. And that says that the black man was cursed black, which is definitely a lie, as Pastor Price said. And he used the example of or demonstration of the many shades of black people because a blind man can see we come in various shades of, and colors. We can be of light complexion, off light, paper bag brown, as I refer to myself, brown, light brown, dark brown, dark, and in some cases, jet black. And in looking at that example, you can see the ridiculousness of that lie. And the ridiculous part is for people to believe it's true. When the proof of it being a lie is right there in the Bible. Yet people are so lazy, lazy to fact check that they'd rather believe a lie, whether it be laziness or from racial hatred. A lot of wrongs in this world is due to people believing in lies and people being too lazy to check what they hear. And sadly, even those who are persecuted from a lie that they themselves have been conditioned to believe the lie that they become lazy in seeking out the truth. And that's where we as black people have failed our own selves. God's truth is right there in front of us, and yet we've been too conditioned and downtrodden to accept truth's reality, no said. 